Hello guys, I've been asked about this topic multiple times. Uh, I haven't really known how I'm gonna contribute to this at all. So I think the approach that I'm gonna kind of go with is try to consolidate all the available information and just explain things as best as I can, um, given the information that we have, which I think to be fair is, is a decent amount of information compared to a lot of uh, what happens in skateboarding. Not not a lot of it is as publicized as this was. If you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the 917 team leaving. Uh, the whole thing went up in flames. So 917 is Alex Olson's skateboarding company. At one point, Nick Stain, Aiden Mackey, Max Palmer, and Cyrus Bennett all rode for the same company. So it was a really cool team at one point. Um, and now nobody rides for it besides Alex himself, I guess. So it's a one man band right now. This all got announced that Cyrus and Max left on the bunt during his interview. This kicks off with them talk him talking about the premiere. In this section, he essentially says, Alex didn't show up to the 9172 premiere and everybody was fucking pretty bummed about that everyone was just kind of like weirded the fuck out like that's just like weird and whack like why would you not show up you live like he i don't even know it was like just stupid bad vibes that night and i think he was just kind of like bummed that he didn't have any footage he mentions cyrus mentions this thing about uh alex not having any footage alex touches on this also in his interview so let's try to find that Predominantly, anytime you see footage of myself, I'd always like kind of wait for the last couple months and like, all right, cool, and get into it. I think the swoosh part, that was filmed in three days, you know what I mean? And so I went to Denmark, tried to film, got nothing. And so then I went to like this fucking deep depression, like legit depression where I was just like, I don't want to do anything. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Didn't work. I, this this part's kind of funny because he's pretty much saying he likes to wait until the last minute to film his video parts and this time it didn't work so he just didn't show up to the premiere i don't think that's very cool i think alex is a cool interesting dude but i don't know i don't i don't think that's really any way to behave if you're in charge of a skateboard company it's very disrespectful to everybody else who's involved who who did not wait until the last minute and did put their their time and their effort in and you just didn't do that so i definitely think that sucks i don't hold anything against either of them i don't i didn't care just like the some pe some people did care that night and were like what the fuck is this this is whack i'm not really surprised this is like classic just like childish behavior from like a skateboarder that's all good you know? i i think cyrus has had a pretty good attitude about this whole thing it seems like He's not really taking any of this shit too seriously, and he's just calling it how it is. A Alex was just not really responsible enough to communicate with everybody and do his job properly. I mean, in my opinion, I think he just, he botched this entire thing. Like, he had a really good thing going. He had a really cool company, and I don't know if he cares. He may not give a shit. It certainly seems like he cares because he's relatively a aggro in, in in parts of this interview but it de definitely seems like he cares and I, I would care too I, he had a really cool company all these dudes in new york city all in the same place they had a really good thing going he just disappeared and he wouldn't communicate with anybody um we'll get more into that with the uh in in cyrus's interview he explains that well when we were first planning this interview we didn't know this but uh you decided to leave 917 skateboards What's the word on that, man? What's popping down there in New York? Well, yeah, I left 917, felt kind of stale, and I just wanted to do something else. And that guy from Slap got me to do the interview. And I guess I just, like, have all the questions are about 917 and shit. And I was just, like, it kind of just made me realize how over it I was because I just had nothing good to say. <laughs> so looking back on your time with 917, would you say there's... Uh like a moment or two which made you start to think like it might be time to move on? I guess just doing trips and stuff was kind of a drag and the communication was really 
all over the place and no one could really like get our anything across you know like if we wanted to do something it just kind of took forever if we wanted a board made it would take forever or not happen and i mean yeah alex had a lot of a lot on his so a couple of things right now first of all i just i'm like really impressed in this interview how good of a job d jones does at getting more information out of cyrus and not being annoying about it he asks him twice very politely and it's almost like not even noticeable that he's doing it. He asks, is there a moment in particular that made you feel like you were over it? I just wanted to like point that out, how good uh, D. Jones is in this interview. I think he really carried this section and he did a really, really great job. Because um, I think Saifa tends to dominate a lot of a lot of these interviews, but D. Jones like really picked his spots well here. Um, and I'm happy that he did because we get really in-depth responses from from Cyrus and basically I mean to summarize he's saying Alex wasn't doing anything like they would try to organize trips they couldn't do it they wanted boards made they couldn't get them made they had no input on graphics so they just had nothing to do with the company don't make shit that is just like a joke you know <laughs> just because it's funny and it's, I mean it, it's cool for shit to be funny and a joke but like it's not cool when the board's not the right size or shape. This is a good point because it's fine to not take things too seriously. We see how far people can get in skateboarding by not taking it too seriously. But as soon as you cross that line into like not even giving your riders the fucking correct size board, like I would be upset too. I would definitely quit. Like, I know how important the shape and dimensions of my skateboard are to me. If I was a professional skateboarder, I would not, I wouldn't tolerate, I would not tolerate that shit either. That's just like, that's inexcusable to not even give your, your professional riders the, the, the shapes that they want. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. It's hard when you can't like plan a trip when we're all like ready to do one and Alex is just like nowhere to be found and hard to contact i don't know so yeah that's pretty much i think the extent of what is pertinent to what we're talking about um and that's pretty much it alex was not fucking paying attention and i think you can get a good gauge of his attitude about this situation by watching this interview so let's let's just watch the alex video now pay attention to how this person explains what happened because it's it's like fascinating i i love this shit uh how he starts at a level and then slowly kind of talks down like how he gets to to a different level it's pretty fascinating like i'm no psychology expert but i'm sure there's some kind of psychological textbook term to explain what alex is is doing here but yeah basically the whole team quit because i was like oh i'll give you like i have to give everyone a pay cut sorry you know and then they're not happy Oh, but so he starts by saying, oh, well, I had to give everybody a pay cut. So obviously they're not happy. Like, I mean, it's not my fault. What could I do? I, did, I had to give people a pay cut. Also, there was like a discrepancy of like graphics because they're like, we want these graphics. And you're like, and he's like, oh, well, they wanted graphics that I didn't want to make. It looks like you just went to fucking, you just learned photo. And then he's blaming them for this also saying like the graphics that they wanted were stupid. Photoshop on YouTube two weeks ago. But like, also I wasn't present. You know what I mean? And that's what happens. You and then he ends with like this sort of like self admittance. Like, also I wasn't present. As if like that was on the same level as the other problems that you had mentioned. I mean, it sounds to me like the primary issue was that he was not present. Nobody could get anything done. He didn't even show up to the fucking video premiere. He literally was not even present for that. Well, the whole thing, Osiris quit, and then just a domino effect happened. Like, you know, COVID happened, and pay cut happened, and they're like, I'm, I'm over it. And you're like, okay. And then it it's weird, like, how in his tone of voice, how he describes the voice of, of Cyrus. Like, it says a lot about, like, in someone's mind, how they feel towards somebody when they're like, ooh, I'm over it. And I mean, I don't know, Alex, like personally, this is all like pretty much speculation, but. I'm over it. And you're like, okay. 
it, it sounds to to me like he kind of feels like it's unreasonable that that everybody quit on him but he's also self-admittedly was not was not present so i have a hard time like framing how he feels about all this well cyrus is on i might as well leave and it's like well if max and cyrus are going i'm gonna go in on them. i had a homie just quit yesterday but i was just like you weren't what you weren't on the fucking team go fuck yourself you delusional fuck I think that's pretty hilarious because, I mean, what does it say about your communication skills if somebody thought that they were skating for your skateboarding company and they weren't even doing that and they felt obligated to, to tell you that they were quitting? I mean, I think that says all we, we really need to know about this situation. Well, now it's actually weirdly like a blessing in some ways, in all ways, really. I, I I'm not gonna lie. I think he's I think Alex is is completely full of shit. Um, and I I really respect Alex Olson as a skateboarder, but like I don't think he's he's telling the truth at all. Um, it's not a b blessing when Cyrus Bennett and Max Palmer leave your your skateboarding company. It's just not. They're like some of the coolest skateboarders in the whole thing. So it's not a blessing when the, those guys don't ride for your company. And it's certainly not a blessing if you can't explain how it's a blessing, I don't think. I mean, he might be trying to frame this in a way that feels like positive and, and beneficial to him, but I don't think it's, I think he's being disingenuous to say that it's, it in all ways, it's a blessing when, when Cyrus and, and Max don't ride for your company anymore. I, I think that's ridiculous. Never, never, ever. I'll fucking quit before I write for them. I got asked before I started. I said no. If I said no because I probably would have said yes. I, I mean, he's pretty funny. He's like, I never, ever, ever would do it. And he's like, okay, well, maybe at one point I would have done it. So it seems like he tends to speak in absolutes. And maybe that's just that's just how he is. But am I, I think that he is a little bit salty um, about the FA thing, considering Nick Stain and Aiden Mackey both got poached off of his board company. So, you know, maybe that's fair. I would possibly be up upset too. Anyway, I think that's about it. Um, I think to summarize this whole situation, I don't really know how I'm going to edit this video because it's a fucking weird ass video to make. And I feel weird about doing it because I think Alex is, I don't want to say he's a cool dude because he's like, in a, from a temperament perspective, he doesn't seem that chill. And I would probably not like people speculating about what's happening with my skateboard company and like what happened that, that led to the whole thing falling apart. But like, I mean, I fucking, this is what I'm doing on YouTube. So I kind of have to, and I like, I don't know, I feel weird about the whole thing, but I mean, essentially it seems like Alex did not have his fucking head in the right place to run a company. And I think it sucks. I thought 917 was really cool. I wish it was, it had continued and I wish the team had stayed intact, but it's just not what happened. Uh, at this point, I would just hope that Max and Cyrus end up doing something really cool. They're both two of my favorite skaters at the moment, and I'm going to fully support whatever it is that they're doing. I mean, I hope Alex figures out a way to leverage 917 into being something cool, because in my opinion right now, 917 is not cool. It's not cool to not give a shit about your skateboard company and for the whole thing to fall apart and then for you to turn around and say, oh, it's actually a blessing that uh, everybody left my company. I think that's complete bullshit. Uh, so I hope you can turn it into something that is cool, um, but I'm not going to be buying any 917 boards like you don't you don't have like a you don't have a team and it's like you don't have to have a team to pull off a company like I buy all I buy sci-fi fantasy shit because um, I think Jerry's like in the goat conversation but Alex Alex is not I think he kind of needs to do a better job so yeah I think that's about it for me guys I don't know if I'll upload this or not I don't I don't really like I don't like this topic um, too much but whatever fuck it